हेलो गाइस वेलकम यू ऑल टू एआई की पाठशाला एआई की पाठशाला आपकी अपनी पाठशाला है एंड टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट ए न्यू सीरीज कॉल्ड एक्सप्लोरेटरी डेटा एनालिसिस सो व्हाट वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी इन दिस सीरीज इन दिस एक्सप्लोरेटरी डेटा एनालिसिस वी विल टेक अ डेटा सेट एंड देन वी विल एक्सप्लोर इट दैट इज वी विल डू द एक्सप्लोरेटरी डेटा एनालिसिस ऑफ दैट डेटा सेट in that we will also be using lot of plotting tools and we will learn about that also after in this series only i am going to going to touch on statistics and we will start complete statistics for data science since uh, you need to understand well we will be learning the statistics we will be learning the theoretical part and we will also be uh, doing those things with the help of data sets we will be uh, learning the real practical applications how we can use those concepts practically now this session is going to be this series in fact not this session this series is going to be very learning experiences for you and very exciting sessions for you so and what i am doing actually i am uh, uh, conducting the live session and i am recording the same and i am putting it on the public platform so that uh, so if you guys want to join my free live sessions you can go to the description section of the video and join my and subscribe my telegram channel from there and i used to uh, send the joining the live class joining link in the telegram channel so from there those of you want to join me live you can join there otherwise recorded session will always be available for you that's all so let's first since today is the first session so i'm uh, going to create one github repository for the exploratory data analysis so let's first open the github repository so let's type github and i want all of you to keep typing along with me don't simply wait and watch other so if you will keep typing along with me you will get the maximum benefit i want you to execute whatever i am executing here that's why all my sessions are hands on live coding fine so i am uh, first i am opening the explore uh, github and now let's create the repository let's create this is a new repository just click on new and let's give it the name of the repository i am giving it the name exploratory exploratory explore or let's give it a some sort name eda this is the name of my repository eda and description in this i am going to discuss x exploratory data analysis and a analysis let's put these things in. this is let's put these things in capital x d capital a capital right i am keeping this repository public let's add readme file here dot get ignore inside this dot get ignore i am going to use uh, code it in python so i am using this python and in the license you can choose any general purpose license i am choosing mit license and let's create the repository so my repository has been created as you can see now what i am going to do i am going to clone this repository to my local vs code so and uh, one more thing is that the data set that i am going to use in this uh, uh, session is called iris flower data set i have already downloaded it so let's me upload that data set i i will also send it to you let's let me send that data set to you first let me upload it then i will send it the data set to you so let's upload it in this repository and uh, desktop this is my iris flower data set and this is something that i also want to upload so let's upload it because i am going to use it fine 
let's commit changes and i have already sent this data set inside the chat window so those of you who don't have this data set you can download it uh, from the chat box fine now let's do one thing after we have created this repository you have to come here you can see this green code is written here and the drop down menu is here you can click on this drop down menu and here is a url is there so if you just clip when i am uh, taking my cursor here i am getting this option of copy url to clipboard you have to copy this url now what i need what i need to, why i am copying this because i want to clone this repository in my local fine from there i will keep on pushing my code committing my code to the github so that everything will be present here and you can access all the codes source code from here now let's open my vs code and let's create let's clone this repository fine so you can see i have opened my vs code visual studio code you guys should also open your visual studio code and when you will see here uh, below this start there is third option called clone git repository so i need to click on this clone repository when i am clicking on this it is asking me to provide the repository url here so what the repository url that i have copied from my github i need to paste that url here and after pasting this url i have to select the first option clone from url if i will select this from the first option let's see what i it is asking me to uh, select the destination uh, for this you uh, for this particular uh, file that i am creating in the github so let's select i am selecting my own destination so you can select whatever you want so there is one folder called EDA live session. I am selecting this as my repository destination. So let's select this. So it is cloning everything in that destination. Fine. I need to open it. Thereafter, can you see the repository has been cloned and whatever thing was present in the GitHub has been copied here. I have uh, already uploaded this iris.csv uh, data set inside the GitHub. So it has, uh, since I have cloned this, it is coming here. I have also uploaded one JPG file because I'm going to use it in this session. Fine. And I have also sent it this uh, repository to the, or uh, this iris flower is available um, uh, widely. You can also download it from here, there. Uh, this repository will be public. So you can download this repository and you can download this data set. Fine. So let's now come to the main point. So we we will be covering this. Uh, I will be covering uh, creating a separate uh, file by the name day one, day two, day three, day four, like that, that. So let's create one file. Today is the starting day, first day. So let's create day one dot ipynb file. Fine. So day one dot ipynb file is created. And you, you, it is asking you to create a uh, select a kernel. So I'm selecting this kernel Python environment. You can select whatever environment you want. Uh, you should select some latest environment. I'm selecting my this environment. Fine. And let's add some few code cells. Fine. That's all. So we are now ready to go. Everything is till here. Any doubt? I suppose there should not be any doubt till here so how we are going to conduct this this entire and i will create a separate uh, playlist for the exploratory data analysis so i am taking this day one day two day three day four and every day whatever we will decode that i'm on the concept that i'm going to discuss i will keep on pushing it to the github you can also download all those things from the my github repository the first question is that what is exploratory data analysis? Fine. So the first question, let me tell you 
what is this exploratory data analysis. So this exploratory data analysis is a task of analyzing our data using simple plotting tools from statistics, from linear algebra and other techniques. So to understand what data set is before we go and model and do actual machine learning. This is extremely important stage. For any given problem, the first thing that we do is actually exploratory data analysis. It is called exploratory because we don't know anything about data when we start. We are trying to understand what the data set is all about by acting as a data detective. In this section, what we will do is we will try to understand some basic, pl basic plotting techniques using a sample data set. The data set that we use is a very simple data set. It is a real world data set. It is so simple and basic that it is used in most textbooks, most courses to introduce the basic concepts. It is very easy to understand. You can think of this data set as sort of like the hello world of data science. Actually, when we learn any new programming language, we write a simple program to print the hello world. This data set is equivalent to this. So let's understand this data set. We will also introduce some terminology terminology which will help us. So I am I am attaching one Wikipedia link. So you can in this uh, here also I am uh, just attaching this is a Wikipedia link. So you can use this Wikipedia link to open this data set. Fine. This is a Wikipedia link that I have attached here. This Wikipedia link will help us help you to go to this data set directly. This is the Iris Flowers data set. And let me open this, this Iris Flower data set. So let's do one thing. opened this iris flower data set it is present on the wikipedia if you will simply write iris flower data set on wikipedia on your google or on your any search engine you will get uh, you will get a link and you can open i have also attached you the link so if you will click on that link you will reach here so let me uh, if i will click here so so this is a data set that I am talking about. This is an iris flower data set. Fine. So let me zoom it a little bit. Fine. Now this is all. So you guys can also open this. Now I'm going to explain you everything related to this thing. Can you see this is data set is written and this is a Wikipedia page iris flower data set. Fine. So if you will look at this data set so you can understand data set is nothing but a table if you want to think about it bluntly now let me introduce you to what this data set is and what problem we are solving and a bunch of terminology so is my voice audible to you guys please confirm me once yes sir now, in 1936, this data set, which you are seeing here, was collected from three types of flowers, all belonging to the iris family. And what are those types of flower? The first flower is called iris setosa. You can see here iris setosa. The second flower is called the iris versicolor. This is iris versicolor. And the third type of flower is called the Iris Virginia, Nika. Fine. All three of them belongs to the Iris family. And if you look 
if you look, all three of them look more or less similar. If you will look at these three flowers, it will look more or less similar. So the task that we are having or the objective that we have is to classify a flower as belonging to one of the three categories. Fine. So what we are doing is something like a classification task. Fine. Now, when we do a data analysis, we need to always keep in mind what our task at hand is because that determines what type of analysis or what type of plotting we would do. Let's first understand our objective because we do the data analysis in line with our objective. So let's assume there is a garden having three types of flowers. If a person picks up a flower, if a person picks up a flower from that garden and brings us, bring that flower to us, can we determine whether the flower belongs to Setosa class, Versicular class or Virginica class? So, we are doing something like a classification task. So if you want to think about it, what we are doing is basically we are doing a classification task. So our objective here is to classify a given flower into one of the three categories. And let's be very, very clear about the objective because it is important that we do a data analysis in line with our objective. Now, given these three flowers, if you look at them visually, if you look at these three flowers visually, they look very similar. Now, what we could do is, given this task to us, we could go to the botanist who studies plants or biologists and we could say, how do you determine or how does a biologist or botanist determine whether the given flower is setosa, versicolor or virginica. And the botanist could say, okay, I measure these four variables. <clears throat> what are these four variables called sepal length, sepal width, petal length and petal width. These are four variables. And based on these four numbers, these four numbers, Based on these four numbers, I know whether it is setosa, versicolor or virginica. Now the task that we are trying to do is we are trying to mimic an algorithm. Let's say a machine learning algorithm to do that. What the botanists know or the botanist has learned by studying the biology of these plants. Now given that you might ask, what is this sepal? What is this petal? So, uh, I am attaching one link here. This is also. So, in if you will click on that link, you will uh, get to know this thing. So, I am attaching this link here. This is called petal and sepal. Fine. If you will click on this link, you will go. The flower will. If let's say I am opening this here. And the same link I have attached. Fine. You can see this. Can you see this? Fine. Same link I have attached. If you will click on that link, you will get to know. It will take you to this flower. Now let me open it, my notebook and let me explain something to you. Let me explain this thing. If you will look at this flower, there is a, you can see this is a 
larger leaf its size is uh, let's say a bigger and it, this the leaf the size of this leaf is bigger and the size of this leaf is little bit smaller so what is this this is sepal this is called sepal and this is called petal and this length which you can see from here till here till the end of this this is called sepal length this is called sepal length s e p a l l e n g t h this is called sepal length and this width this from here to here this is called sepal width let me write it here sepal width so this is a sepal length and this is a sepal width similarly this length from here till this end to this hair is called petal length p e t a l petal length and this width from here to here it is called petal width p e t a l petal w i d t h so the four variables that we were talking about few minutes ago is about this this sepal length this sepal length this sepal sepal length this sepal width this petal length and this petal width so a biologist know to classify a given flower into one of these three categories you have to measure first you have to measure these four flowers and depending upon the measurement value of these four parameters or these four variables you get to know you can classify whether the flower belongs to which category or which class is this thing clear to you now let me erase this and let me take you to the this that wikipedia page again now you have understood this sepal length sepal width petal length and petal width fine so what you what the thing is that when a biologist botanist or a biologist is given any new flower he would actually look at these four parameters and what are those these or these four values and who what are this these four values he would look at these four values and he would say whether it is setosa versicola or virginica now since the biologist uses these four variables or these four measurements it is possible that we could use these four measurements and built a simple algorithm which can classify a given new flowers into setosa versicolor or virginica as i have told you earlier machine learning is all about learning from data now let's see in 1936 before the advent of modern computing this data set was collected now this data set is nothing but a table this table basically has now if you see look at this table this table is let me open my so if you look at this table this table has basically four fields this 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 and this these are the four fields or you can say of variables sepal length sepal width petal length and petal width these are the four variables and each of these rows and this is basically a index or row first row second row third row fourth row like this this is basically a row so each of these rows can be called as a data points or observations each of these rows can be called as data points data points or observation or observation 
each of these rows can be called as data points or observation. And the same thing will have multiple terms in machine learning. Some of these concepts were because this is because some of these concepts were discovered and detailed by people from various departments. For example, the statisticians might call these four variables as independent variables. These variables, sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and vital width, these are the variables. And variables are also called as variables. And it can also be called as independent variables. Independent variables. These variables are independent variables because they are not depending upon the any any these are independent. Their value is not depending upon anyone else. That's why they are called independent variables. And let's say if mathematicians uh, will look at this table, mathematicians call these data points as vector. You can also call these data points or observations as vectors. V E C T U F. If mathematician will look at it, since machine learning is an interact intersection of many fields, let's say in this case from biology to computer science to mathematics to statistics, etc., this same thing might have multiple names or terms. We will get to know these terms. We will keep using then often over the duration of this course. Now let's know uh, what we have to predict here is this species. This is our task because depending upon the values that we get, if we if we take any new flower, what we will look at uh, at that flower, we will look at these four parameters or these four variables or these four independent variables: sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. And depending upon the measurement or value of these four parameters, you will predict the uh, which species that flower belongs to. So this is basically is a prediction. This is also called label, L-A-B-E-L. -E this is also called L-A-B-E-L. -E or this is also called as the class level. It can also be called as the class level, class level in this case, L-A-B-E-L or class level because I'm basically predicting which in which one of, of the three classes, Setosa, Versicolor and Virginica, which of these classes it belongs to. So it can also be called as a class level. This is what we need to predict given these four measurements. And these four measurements are called variables. This is called data points or vectors. And this is also called level or dependent variable. We can also call this or dependent variable. Dependent variable. So these are some terminology that you should know. Why this is called dependent variable? Because the value of this uh, term spaces is depending upon the value of these four variables. And these values are not depending on any other values. So that's why they are called independent variables. But the value of this variable species is depending upon these four variables. That's why we also called it dependent variable. So either you call it level or you call it class level or you call it dependent variable. Here variable or independent variable both are same. Here data points or observations or vector. All the three are equivalent. So now let's understand vector. So what vector is? For now, let me write it here. For now, let's understand, understand vector vector as vector as understand vector as 
n dimensional numerical array you should remember this for now let's understand vector as n dimensional numerical array numerical array double array by array fine this is for now why i am writing this is for now because we will understand more mathematical details of vector when we learn linear algebra and we are going to learn linear algebra very soon so you the data set that we have seen just now the uh, this data set so you can think of this data set as four dimensional array you can think of this data set as four dimensional array and what is and this is what a vector is for now for now this is for now so if i write let's say this is uh, let's say if i write 5.1 4.1 let's say and 9.8.7 let's say so this is basically what this is this is basically a this is a two dimensional array or vector this is a two dimensional two dimensional vector or array fine so there is more rigorous mathematical definition with all the properties of vector that we will learn when we learn linear algebra this i am talking i am explaining you this because so that you will not face difficulty in understanding what i am going to explain you next so this is now there is a very basic question that arises what is this what is one dimensional vector let me write what is one dimensional vector fine what is one dimensional vector so one dimensional vector is nothing but your scalar let me write here one dimensional 1d vector is nothing but scalar scalar fine so if i am writing this let's say if i will write x is equal to let's write 4.1 it is exactly equal to x is equal to 4.1 both are same because i have already told you one dimensional vector is basically nothing but your scalar so now our objective is very very clear that's very important now there is one more question now you might ask me why we are not using color as a feature why we are using only these four sepal length sepal width petal length and petal width as our variables independent variables and why we are not using other very simple things like shape let's say color let's say fragrance or there can be many number of such parameters why we are not using that features so here in this specific case biologists or botanists know what features are important so domain knowledge is extremely important in machine learning and machine learning is not just about crunching the numbers it is about making sense of the world it is very very scientific process if you don't know what sepal and petal are you never going to make sense of what your solution is while machine learning has a lot of interesting maths to learn it's also very uh, important to understand the domain knowledge it's also about understanding the domain knowledge 
Now, uh, let's say imagine if these four fields or these four variables are not given to you, what would you use? Here in this case, I have already given you or someone has given this these four variables provided, but if these all things are not given to you at all, what you will do? I would say, I don't know anything about plants. So let's go to the botanist and ask him. So it's extremely important that you have domain knowledge or you consult somebody who has domain knowledge to understand what's happening to solve a problem much better than somebody who is just doing number crunching. So machine learning is not about making the number crunching. It's about getting insights into data. This is very, very important task that we have to do. Now, let's go to the second part of this session. What is this? Iris flower data set. This is a Iris flower set. So let's what I'm doing. I'm importing a bunch of libraries here. In Python and Pandas section, we already have uh, learned about these libraries. So let's import it. First, let's import import Pandas as PD. Then import NumPy as NP. NumPy as NP. Import Matplotlib, mat plot lib dot pi plot dial dot pi plot as plt and then import c board import c board as sns as sns Fine. So you need to import the all these four libraries. If you will just run this, these four libraries will get imported. Fine. Now, one thing that you need to remember that in machine learning, in exploratory data analysis, the amount of code that we have to write is much, much less than the standard software engineering jobs because what is important in machine learning is not necessarily lot of code what is important here is richness of our analysis analysis is more important than code and and don't take me wrong i am not saying code is not important you have to know the basics programming but you do not have to write thousands of lines of code Typically, we write tens of lines of code or maybe 50 lines or 100 lines of code and we are done. Fine. So now let's first do one thing. I have already sent you the data set in the chat window. So you should uh, download that data set and uh, you can uh, uh, upload it on the GitHub or if you will put it in the same folder in which uh, you have cloned the repository, then, uh, then that's also fine. Or otherwise, you have to uh, give it the path. So let's read the uh, this data set. So I'm going to load this data set. If I will write ID, let's write iris here. This is a variable pd dot read underscore csv because this is in the form of csv file. And then write iris iris capital iris iris underscore csv if simply i will write this and if i will run the code let's see what i am getting fine now if i will access this iris flower can you see this is the data set that we have seen in the wikipedia page the same data set I am getting the truncated value. The uh, if you will look at this data set, 
you will see all those things sepal length sepal width petal length petal width and this is the spaces we already have and this data line it is showing that 150 rows and five columns if you will see this is my first column this is second third fourth and fifth column this is not counting because this is my index so index column is uh, not get counted and 150 rows starting from 0 till 149 so this is all about now let's talk about how many data points or and features this is having we already know this from but we will talk it in a if you will write iris dot Save simply if you will write this ids dot save. Let's see what you will get. I am getting one fifty comma five. What it means? It means this data set is having one fifty rows and five columns. And let's say if you want, what are the column names that is present in our data set? Then you have to write iris dot columns c o l u m n s columns if you will simply write you will get all the column names see sepal length sepal width petal length paper petal width and spaces and data type you are getting as an object so this is a, this is uh to know the name of your columns. Now, if you want to know one important thing, let me write it here. How many, how many data points, points for each class, each class, let's say, are present, are present. If you want to know this, or you can also write it like this, or, or, or let's write it here only, not here. I'm writing it here. Or if you, you can also write it like how many flowers, flowers for each species, species. These are present. If you want to know this, what you have to do, there's something called value cons, which we know. We have to write iris and inside the square bracket, if you will write a species. And then if you write this thing, this method value cons. So what you will get? you will get the value of all the cons. How many data points for each class or how many flowers, here many should come, how many flowers for each species are present? How many flowers for each, can you see? Setosa is having 50 numbers. Versicolor is also having a 50 numbers and Virginica is also having a 50 numbers. So, this is basically you understand this is basically a balanced data set why i am calling it a balance because each one of the three species setosa versicline and virginica has equal number of values so this is completely balanced data set so i uh, what i say iris is a balanced data set as the number of data points for each class is 50. Now you might uh, ask a question, what is then if this is a balanced data set, then what is imbalanced data sets? Or what is uh, what is an imbalanced data points? Fine. If let's say, I'm just giving you a brief idea because in next session, I'm going to discuss this imbalanced data set more profoundly. If let's say, if this should be like 20, this should be like 10 and this should be like 120. 
now this 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 is an imbalanced data set because this is having a very less value this is and this is comparison to this so now this data set has become an imbalanced data set i will discuss this imbalanced data set let's say if let's say instead of this if this is like this is 45 this is let's say 55 and let's say this is 50 now now this is balanced or imbalanced can you uh, tell me anyone can you guess they're imbalanced okay but i can say this is almost balanced this is almost balanced because the differences are not much it's in a certain range so there is not much fluctuation so if this is if the condition is like that then also it is you cannot say it completely balanced but it is almost balanced so that's all for the today's session in the second session we will start from what is imbalanced data set and then we will continue uh, with this data set and we will try to understand this data set and we will do 2d scatter plot and then 3d scatter plot and we will plot and understand the plotting things that's all for the day so now let's uh, push the code to the github and uh, let's push the code so i have to first need to save it find then first let me write first session session of e d a completed with iris data set point let's commit the code yes sync changes okay fine so guys if you guys let me so if you guys are having any issues any difficulty in understanding the videos or whatever you can definitely comment it in the comment section of the video i will try to update myself and i will try to clarify your doubts if there will some little doubt i will uh, answer it in the in the uh, comment se section only or otherwise if there is something more profound i will take it during the live session and i will try to address that doubts so that's all thanks for watching thanks for coming keep learning keep smiling keep keep learning on new approach new year is coming so let's gear up for the day Thanks. Thanks a lot.